Hey y'all, Twana Michelle here, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Coach and Mental Health Therapist. I am back with another video and today we're going to talk about red flags. What exactly are red flags? Um, if you have been anywhere on social media, you have seen tons of information about toxic relationships, narcissists, narcissistic abuse, red flags, all of these things and they are super important. But I find that many people struggle with really understanding what red flags actually means like do I are these like deal breakers are these things that I just take a mental note of are these things that I address so that's what I'm going to talk about what red flags are and what are some examples of red flags in a relationship and basically what to do if you find yourself um, noticing red flags with your partner. So what are red flags? Red flags are any signs or behaviors that alert you to problems or potential problems in the relationship that could lead to long-term conflicts or perhaps even the dissolution of the relationship and it depends on how you feel about the red flag what it is and whether or not your partner is doing anything to change that particular behavior now there are red flags i think that should absolutely be deal breakers and there are red flags that are things that you need to address, which you can do with your partner, just the two of you, are preferably getting into some type of marriage counseling or couples uh, counseling if you are not married, so that you can try and work on these issues. Because red flags are not things that are annoying. For example, I really, really dislike the fact that my husband is always losing the remote. He just can't seem to put it back where it goes. And we get into these little arguments about it. It just freaking drives me crazy because I'm like, how hard is it to do that? It is starting to change, but it took a while to get there. But that's not a red flag, okay? That is a minor nuisance. That is a pet peeve. It's not a red flag. So a red flag is a more serious problem. Should red flags be deal breakers? It depends on what it is, okay? So I'm going to give you some examples of things that are red flags so that you'll have an understanding of something that is a potential big problem in a relationship that might lead to the relationship ending um, versus something that you just don't like or something that's annoying. But before I do that, let me also add that this is an example of red flags you get to decide that for yourself and that's the thing about relationships and when you're really working on understanding what healthy relationships are like or what you think it should be like and what you're wanting in a relationship you get to be selective you get to choose you get to decide what is a red flag for you and what is it basically what you want in a relationship what you don't what is going to work and what absolutely is going to require some change in order for that relationship to move forward. So some examples of red flags. Um, I'm going to give you the first example because this is sort of in the beginning stage of a relationship is the love bombing, right? This is when someone is really, really idealizing you. They're coming on really strong. They're constantly maybe calling or texting and buying you gifts and taking you out on amazing dates and surprise vacations and all the right things which really feel good. That is a red flag. I know we like that and we fall for that. That is a red flag, but let's move on past that. Um, so this that's more like in the beginning stages when you're getting to know someone. So let's talk about moving past that stage. Maybe you didn't notice the love bombing or whatever and now you're in a relationship with someone or maybe they didn't really um, show any love bombing if you are dealing with someone who is personality disorder like a narcissist or a sociopath then you're going to have a lot of that love bombing in the beginning but you may be with someone who just isn't capable or needs some work in order to have a healthy relationship and so they may not have the love bombing and some of the other behaviors that you will see the patterns of um, behaviors that you will see with like a narcissist but that doesn't mean that, that there are not red flags i'm going to give you just some common red flags that are found in problematic relationships. One huge red flag is when someone um, is dishonest. 
And this could be about minor things that you may feel are not super important. When someone is lying to you and they cannot be honest with you and they are not transparent with you, that is a huge red flag in the relationship. Now, is that a deal breaker? You get to decide that. You get to decide. Um, it just depends, right? It depends on what the dishonesty is about. None of it is justifiable. None of it is uh, excusable in any way. But at the same time, you get to decide if it's something that you can work with or not. But dishonesty, lying, definitely a huge red flag in a relationship. Another huge red flag, lack of accountability. This is when there is wrongdoing and your partner cannot accept responsibility and accountability for their actions they cannot admit when they are wrong they cannot apologize there's no genuine there's no genuine remorse as a result there is no change behavior they absolutely will not take accountability for their actions another red flag your partner might be controlling they may control where you go what you do what you wear whether or not you can have friends what you can do with your friends they may control things financially but that is a red flag when they are trying to control you and the relationship any type of manipulation of course is a red flag if someone is sort of manipulating a situation or manipulation is basically when someone is intentionally doing something to affect the outcome of a situation or the way that you think or feel about a particular situation then they tend to be using extreme persuasion so that you can maybe see things their way maybe doubt yourself you probably heard the term gaslighting of course everywhere that's a form of manipulation of course it's also a form of psychological abuse but manipulation makes you doubt your own reality and it causes you to basically um, see things from your partner's point of view and their perception which they have orchestrated that another huge red flag is that your partner may lack empathy they don't have the ability to feel for you they don't have the ability to understand how you may be feeling how their actions may be causing you to feel they don't really understand emotions on a feeling level therefore they cannot empathize if someone cannot empathize then how can they feel bad for you how can they see your pain and understand what that may feel like for you and as a result don't want you to feel that and so they're willing to change their behavior they can't do that red flag huge one another red flag is someone who withholds affection they withhold attention they punish you by emotional withholding so that means that gestures of love and affection are conditional and it will be taken away if they choose to do so based on how they feel, based on your behavior, based on whether or not they think you deserve it. The silent treatment is very similar to that. Someone who punishes you by refusing to acknowledge your existence. They don't talk to you. They ignore you. They basically treat you like you don't exist. That is emotional abuse. It is a red flag. Another red flag is anyone who refuses to address problems and resolve conflict. They won't talk about anything of importance. Maybe they stonewall you, maybe they shut down anytime you try to bring up a conflict that needs to be addressed. They don't have the communication skills to do that. That is a red flag, okay? Not necessarily a deal breaker for some because people can learn communication skills so that they can communicate more effectively, problem solve, and resolve those conflicts in a healthy way. But if that doesn't get addressed, then problems go unresolved and it can lead to more tension, more strain, more stress and fatigue in the relationship. So that is a red flag. And the last red flag I'm going to give you guys is any type of abuse, okay? Emotional abuse, uh, physical abuse, psychological abuse, financial abuse, any type sexual abuse, any type of abuse. Not only is that a red flag, I think that is a deal breaker. I will tell you what I think deal breakers are um, in relationships for me and what might be healthy for you to consider. Like I said, any type of abuse, that, that, that should be a deal breaker. Now, some of you may be saying, my partner um, you know, can go to counseling and get help. And I'm not saying they can't. Let me say, I'm not saying they can't, but what I'm saying is I don't think anyone should accept or tolerate abuse. 
And even if that partner goes to get help, that doesn't mean that we have to stay in relationship with them while they do that. We can separate and let them do the work that they need to do and prove that they are not going to be intentionally harmful. Abuse is intentional harm, not acceptable under any circumstances. That's a deal breaker. Another deal breaker is repeated infidelity. Okay, Repeated infidelity is betrayal and emotional abuse. So it falls under that abuse category. Now, I know that there are situations where one partner may um, be unfaithful. There may be, you know, a, an incident that occurs. They may have genuine remorse. They may, they may work on uh, changing that behavior. They may work on the part of themselves that chose to go outside of the relationship to cope with whatever the situation was. And they may work with their partner on building up the relationship and working together to figure out how this happened and how we can prevent it from happening again. I'm not saying that's not possible. That is possible in some relationships. But at the same time, that relationship definitely comes with a lot of red flags. And how could I not even mention that? Cheating, definitely. Definitely a red flag. I didn't even mention I didn't even mention that specifically. But it will fall under that abuse category. Um if it is repeated and repeated uh, cheating is intentional emotional abuse. So those are things that I would consider red flags. Those are things that I would consider you sort of taking a break away from your partner and giving them time either to work on themselves or calling it quits for good. And know that you have the right to do that. That is so important. Knowing that you have the right to do that. You have the right to decide what is acceptable for you and what is not. What am I going to tolerate and what I'm not what do I want in a relationship versus what I don't? You get to decide that. And so what to do if you notice these red flags in your relationships? Number one, you want to go to your partner and have a discussion with them about it. Secondly, secondly, if they're not deal breakers, you want to try to work with them and give them an opportunity to change these behaviors, to fix these problems. If you cannot do it on your own as a couple, then go and see maybe a couples counselor who can help you do that. Um, another thing that you want to do is determine, like I said, whether or not this is a deal breaker. And also, is there a safety issue? If I go to my partner about the problem and my partner is violent and abusive, then that would not be the right approach. So if there is any type of physical safety issue, I recommend that you first get counseling for yourself to figure out the best way to deal with that situation. But don't ignore red flags. They don't go away. Y'all, things don't get better just because we don't address them. We go into denial about our relationships. We go into denial about our partner's behaviors and nothing changes. So we're not going to do that. So let me know what are some red flags that you guys have noticed um, in your relationships. And definitely let me know which of those red flags are deal breakers for you.